Hey everyone, Stacy here with the Bargain Bandit. Welcome to episode 18. I can't believe I've done 18 of these already. That's crazy. Uh, today's date is October 9th, 2012, and in today's episode, we're going to go over some more things that I have bought at yard sales and thrift stores and recently sold on eBay, and I've got some pretty interesting things, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to go over my top three favorite recent finds, one of which I just picked up today um, at a thrift store and uh, that I'd never been to. So stay tuned for information on that and then in the Q&A today I didn't get any questions last time I got a lot of comments but not a lot of questions um, so I am actually going to pose a question to the audience and maybe you guys can help me figure out how to do something I've been trying to figure out how to do so we'll see how that goes um, so reverse Q&A today um, I'm gonna try and get through this quickly because I'm trying really really hard to um, watch O Unit Productions Trash Talkin' Treasures and if you haven't seen this yet it's pretty neat. Um, they have special guests on the show, other people with YouTube shows who are pickers. Um, so I, I really wanted to tune in live finally to one of their shows. I have I never get to catch it live. I always watch it later. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, watch it live and of course I need to do this video too. So we'll, we'll see how everything goes and uh, hopefully I'll be able to catch them live and see you there maybe. So I'm actually taping this after I watched the O Unit Productions thing. I did attend it live. It was pretty neat. So if you ever have a chance to check them out, check them out. Uh, so the first item I'm going to talk about was this really cool Kermit the Frog hat. Had a green lighting, had Kermit the Frog on it, and it said it, it's hard being, no, it's all about the green. Yeah, it said all about the green. Um, you know, really cool trucker hat. Interesting. I didn't know a lot about it. There was nothing on the internet. This hat didn't exist on the internet. Other hats like it, or other hat, Kermit hats, sold anywhere from $9.99 to $14.99. So I put it up at the high end price of $14.99, and it sold like super duper fast. And I had it sitting around for a while because I didn't think it would sell that quick. And it was like boom, sold like within a day, it was gone. So one, I think I maybe priced it too low, and two, I need to get the rest of my hats up because apparently hats are pretty easy sells, especially unique ones like this Kermit hat was. Uh, it, it it really sold fast, so I'm I'm kind of excited, but. I kind of wish I knew more about it before I'd posted it. The very first vintage board game I bought was at this community like uh, sale outside of a church. And it was in a box just like with a bunch of trinkets and miscellaneous stuff. And it was called Executive Decision. And it was a Sid Saxon game. And for people who don't know Sid Saxon, he's kind of a big deal in the board game space. He he develops a lot of uh, really cool board games that um, hobby gamers just go crazy over. And so Executive De Decision is one of his games. Sid Saxon, unfortunately, is no longer with us. But, um, but his games shall live forever. And uh, it was just a... a kind of a bizarre game um, it was a economy simulator from the late 70s and so I, I picked that up for a buck and um, and I finally sold it so even though Sid Saxon is super popular um, his game Acquire is a really easy sell all of his other games are kind of more difficult sells um, and you know executive decision is one of those that is a, a more difficult sell but it finally did sell for profit, <laughs> even though it sat in my store for like three months. A while ago, I talked about a storage auction I went to and a really cool uh, little knife that I got at the storage auction. Um, I bought an auction, the whole thing for 60 bucks. And just this past weekend, I took um, a bunch of the items I had over to my mom's yard sale. And just on the yard sale items, I made my 60 bucks back plus some. You know, the, the boots went for $5 a pop. I had nine pairs of boots out of there. A lot of the clothes sold, you know, some of the miscellaneous items that were in there sold. A few things I got out of the unit, I was able to sell on eBay. And one of the items, uh, I put up for auction and it did sell was this little um, knife uh, said Patton's Army on it it was a Parker Cutlery knife made in Japan from surgical steel really neat little it looked like a, a little gun like a tiny little gun it was like this big <laughs> um, and uh, it wasn't in the best condition it was dirty I don't know anything about knives so I didn't even want to attempt to clean it um, I you know tried to wipe the dirt off as much as I can but I don't want to ruin 
the knife even more than it might already be ruined. I don't know. Um, and it looked like it had a bone handle, but I wasn't 100% sure, so I didn't claim that it was a bone handle, although some people on eBay are claiming it's a bone handle. I, I don't know how you get that knowledge, so <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to try and claim it. Ooh, something just cha-chinged. <laughs> um, but so the... Uh, the the knife sold um i put it up for you know a, a seven day auction so it, it just recently sold um and i had a lot of interest in it i thought maybe it would go higher one went for 86 dollars but it was in pristine condition and mine wasn't in pristine condition but at this point i'm pure profit on the unit anything else i sell from the unit is just profit at this point gravy so it's a it's a good thing and let's see what just sold huh you want to know you want to know Monopoly Star Wars Classic just sold. So by Monopoly Star Wars, right there, $19.99 with free shipping. So I'm only going to make 7 or 8 bucks on it, but hey. <laughs> About a month and a half ago, I picked up a game called the Stock Market Game. And it's just an old vintage game from the late 60s um, that... You know, it was about the stock market, highs and lows, and the randomness of the stock market. And it was it's actually a huge game for hobby gamers. Hobby gamers love this type of thing. My version was not in the best condition. I mean, yes, it's a 50-year-old game, but still, it was, it was in pretty rough shape. Um, the box was in really rough shape, and the, um, the interior contents were well played with. So um, it was a little harder sell, and I initially started trying to get the sky, it's been up there for a couple of months now on uh, on, on eBay um, in my store. Um, and I've slowly been lowering the price until finally I guess I found the sweet spot. I put it up for $19.99 plus shipping um, and it sold for $19.99. So uh, I finally sold the stock market game. It's you know a wonderfully old hobby game. So those types of games, they generally do pretty well. If it had been in better condition, I might have gotten 50, 60 bucks for it, to give you an idea. Uh, a mint copy of that's going to go for a lot of money, but a, a non-mint uh, rough copy, I still got 20 bucks for it. I'm not leaving myself much time for everything else, so I'm going to have to race through my top three picks. So the first one, um, I went to an estate sale, and they had a bunch of these vintage Bibles for $2 a piece. So I picked up three of them, and this is my favorite one. This is the Omega Holy Bible. has the box. This is um, published by the Catholic Church, so it's a little different. Um, this one is kind of neat. Um, it's, you know, it's in really good condition, but it's kind of neat because um, inside there's a little bit of information about the original owner. So um, it's, this one's from the 70s, the mid-70s. The other two I picked up are actually older, but they're not in as good a condition and they're not as interesting. So I, I decided that, you know, this would be the one I'd show. Uh, next game is something I picked up at a thrift store um, a week ago. And uh, this is called The Game of Austin. And, uh, well, not a week ago, I guess over this past weekend, I picked it up. Um, Austin, Texas, which is, you know, really close to San Antonio. Uh, and I love the city of Austin. This game is from 1982. So this is about the city of Austin as it was 30 years ago. And it probably looks nothing at all like it looks today. But um, it's kind of a neat game. It's complete. Um, and I don't, you know, there, there's no you know, information about this game on the internet. It's an extremely rare copy. It's interesting because it has a lot of advertising. It looks like they sold advertising to publish the game for like the, from the local radio station, the local hardware store, that sort of thing. And they're, the, those, those things are in the game. They're part of the game and then they have advertising on the instruction sheet from those places as well. So it's kind of a neat game. I'm going to put it up for $50 on eBay and see what happens because it is rare. It's in pretty decent condition. Um, the boxes, you know, got a little a little bit of damage, but in general the game is in very good condition. And, you know, it's like I said, extremely rare. So I'm and kind of kitschy. So those types of games, you know, tend to do well. Uh, and then the third thing is I went to a thrift store today. Um, I went to an auction today and uh, didn't buy a thing. There were 20 units and the only unit that I even wanted to bid on um, had a couple of swords and like a um, a shield and that sort of thing really really cool but the price was just too much for me right next door to it was a thrift store I'd never been to because it's 40 minutes from my house so I don't generally go to that side of town um, and so since I was down there I decided to go look and they had a bunch of games I picked up like nine or ten games and this is one of them Bureaupoly. It's, you know, not got a huge, tremendous amount of value, but it will sell pretty easily. And what I like about this is that it is in really good condition. 
Um, so much so that it's never been opened. It's never been played. Like everything is still sealed. So <laughs> that is always a fun find. Uh, I paid $1.91 for it. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty happy about that. And, you know, those were my top three picks. So real quick, I'm going to have a couple of things cut out. Um, at least one of my items I'm going to cut out, and I'm going to call it my cutting room floor. Um, and I'm going to put it up as another video just so that you can still see it. Um, but it'll be not part of this, so you know, check out that one too. It'll be about you know one of the items I sold. Uh, I know I tend to be a little long-winded sometimes, but I like telling stories. Uh, so my Q&A this week. My question is this. How on earth do I find a partner for this business? Uh, I really want somebody to come over to my house and work with me every day while my kids are at school. Preferably a stay-at-home mom, um, somebody similar to me, somebody who lives in my area. San Antonio, for those that don't know, is huge. It sprawls, like it sprawls. So like the auction I went to today is 40 minutes away. It's still in San Antonio. I live in San Antonio, that auction was in San Antonio, it was 40 minutes away. So San Antonio is just this ridiculous sprawling city. Um, so somebody who lives on the north side, somebody who, um, you know, would like to get involved in this and somebody who maybe has different specialties than me, you know, somebody who knows something about clothes or purses or girly things that I don't know anything about or cameras or God, there's so many things I don't know anything about. So somebody like with different specialties than me would be great too. How do I find that person? I have um, asked my friends to tell their friends. <laughs> I tell everybody that I meet and I hand them my business card and be like, if you hear of anybody who's interested, I'm looking for a partner. Um, do I post on Craigslist or am I just going to get a lot of creepy weirdos if I do that? I'm a little afraid of Craigslist, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I, I, don't know, I don't know how to find this person, my partner, you know. Uh, I'm buying so much stuff that I can't keep up with posting it. And also, I would be nice. There's over 200 sales in San Antonio every weekend. That's not even counting outside of San Antonio, up in Austin, which is not a far drive for us, all of that. Um, there's so much that I'm not getting to. So having another person out there looking to would be really good. My husband, um, you know, he's got the kids on the weekends. He, we have bowling on Saturday mornings. I'm sharing. I'm oversharing. I'm sorry. But there's just like, there's no way my husband can go out and he's not, he's not a buyer anyway. I, I'm a buyer. So how do I find somebody who will, who will become my partner in crime and my, um, my, you know, just the, my, my person. <laughs> how do I find this person? Where are you? Are you out there? Are you watching this? Because if you are, message me. But if you're not, like, can can somebody tell me maybe you have a partner that you found somehow or give me some suggestions some creative suggestions on how I find this person because I need to find her so that is my question for you uh, so thank you for watching <laughs> please answer my question um, and please like my video and subscribe to my video and ask me a question so I have another question not next week to at answer please um, in my Q&A uh, and Thank you to everyone for watching, and I guess, oh, eBay, I'm Cross House of Cards and Games. I have two websites, Cross House of Cards and Cross House of Cards and Games. Please find me on Facebook, Cross House of Cards, and that's it. So thank you, everyone, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.